So we're going to continue looking at some optimization problems. We did one last time that didn't require us to do anything special in terms of getting the function in terms of one variable. This time we're going to have to, and for most of the problems, maybe work a little bit harder, and it's going to involve this process that's laid out in steps two and three. So we're going to, again, start by drawing a picture, identify what we know, what we don't know. Then we're going to start by writing the equation that we are trying to either minimize or maximize. We might refer to this as our primary equation. When this is in terms of two variables, that means there will be additional information that we can write another. We could call this our secondary or what I'll sometimes call the constraining equation. And that second equation is going to allow us to get it in terms of one of the variables to sub back into that primary equation. So let's take a look at an example, of course. So number two, you've decided to open a doggy daycare. In order to do so, the state requires that you have a yard of 2,560 square feet. You have decided to enclose a rectangular yard behind the actual building itself. Uh, so what that means is the building is going to serve as one side. So you're only going to have to fence in three sides. For aesthetic reasons, you have decided to fence the side that runs parallel to the building with a slightly more expensive fence. And then the sides that run parallel um, are going to be a little bit less. So the sides that run parallel will cost $5 per running foot. No, I'm sorry, the side that runs parallel to the building will cost $5 per running foot. The other two sides, which are parallel to each other, are going to cost um, a little bit less, $4 per foot. And we want to minimize the cost of the fencing. So there's a lot of information packed in there. So let's start one step at a time here. And let's begin by drawing a picture. All right, so what do we have? Well, we have this daycare building. So let's just say that this is the building itself. So here is my actual doggy daycare here, the building itself. Now, I am going to have to fence this in um, using one of the sides. Um, so let's say where I have the most room here. So. I am going to fence in um, maybe along this side. We'll say this is the back of the building. So these two sides are gonna cost the same amount of money. And then this side is the one that's a little bit more expensive. And again, the building itself is going to serve as that um, fourth side, I guess you could say, so it won't need to be fenced. All right. What we are trying to do is fence in 2,560 square feet of a yard, and we wanna do it in as inexpensive of a way as possible. So what we're trying to find are the dimensions. So I'm trying to find, let's say this is my X length, and then we'll call this our uh, Y length. All right, so let's think about here what it is that we're trying to do. We are trying to minimize the cost. So that's where we start here. So we are trying to minimize the cost. And so let's just, you know, kind of think about it in words first. So we're going to have, you know, the cost per foot of the... I'll just call it the Y side, and then times the number of feet on that Y side. And then we're gonna have plus the cost per foot of those two X sides, and then times the number of feet of, again, those two X sides. So just kind of in words first, make sure that we understand kind of what's going on here. All right, so the cost per foot of the Y side, so that was the one that's a little more expensive. So who knows, maybe this building backs up to um, a, a street and they want that part to look a little bit nicer, whatever the reason is. 
So this is the one, so the side that is running parallel to the building, that is gonna cost us $5 per foot. And the other two sides are costing us $4 per foot. All right, so let's jump in. Cost per foot then on the Y side, we just said that that cost per foot is $5. And then times the number of feet, well, that is literally what Y represents. And so that's going to represent the cost of that blue portion of the fence. And then we want to, so this is what our cost equals. The cost per foot of the two X sides. Well, that's what we've highlighted in red in the paragraph. That is costing us $4 per foot um, times, now the number of feet, because there are two of those X sides, that's going to be two X. That is the number of feet. So really in both of these cases, what we're doing is just simply cost per foot times number of feet, cost per foot times number of feet, okay? All right, now here's a good example where when we start off, this is what we would call our primary equation. It is now five Y plus eight X. And this is in terms of two variables. So this is what I would call the primary equation. It's not yet in one variable. So this is where we kind of need to go off to the side and think about the secondary, or what I like to refer to as the constraining equation. So when you think about, you know, trying to make an inexpensive fence, you could make a really cheap fence if you just made it very, very tiny, but you're not allowed to do that. There is a constraint that you're working under. So this is your constraining equation. You can't make a tiny, tiny fence. It has to have, in this case, an area of 2,560 square feet. So off to the side, let's write out what that would mean then. So what we know is that our area has to equal this 2,560. All right, so area of a rectangle doesn't matter if there's, you know, three sides or, or that are being fenced or all, it's the area, it's what's on the inside, that's just length times width, which on our picture is simply x times y. So x times y equals 2560. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for, and it makes absolutely no difference which variable you solve for in this case, there may be situations you generally want to pick whichever variable is easiest to isolate for, or when you look back at the primary equation, if there's one that you think looks like it's easier to, to take out and put in in terms of a different variable. But in this case, they're obviously the same amount of work either way. So I'm solving y um, is equal to 2560 over x. So this is, again, what I would refer to as our secondary or our constraint equation. And so this now means that we can go back into the original equation here and take out the y and in its place, we can replace it with 2560 over x. And of course, everything else stays the same. And so this is the first time that I'm going to actually label this as a C of X function, because up until now, maybe I would have gotten everything in terms of Y, and then I would have had to call it C of Y. So we have C of X. All right, so let's continue here. Let's just maybe multiply these two here, um, the five times the 2560, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, so we are going to have 12,800. And then for purposes of differentiating, I'm gonna think of this as x to the negative first, just to make it easier to take my derivative with the power rule. So remember, you're looking for critical points, so you're looking for where your derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. All right, so c prime, bring down the negative one, you're gonna have negative 12,800 x to the negative second plus eight. And so my first instinct, whenever I'm gonna to have to work with something that has negative exponents, let's first just rewrite those in, in their positive exponent form. So dropping that x to the positive second into the denominator. 
And then you could work with it like this. You see me tend to get a common denominator a lot, which is fine, but just so I'm, I'm not always doing it that way, um, you could jump in right now and set C prime equal to zero if you wanted to. Um, so if you have your negative 12,000, I'm just kind of rewriting this here. So again, one option would definitely be to say, okay, I'm just going to multiply that eight by X squared over X squared. That's gonna allow me to get a common denominator. And then I can do the usual thing where I just, if I'm looking for where C prime is equal to zero, it's where the numerator goes to zero. That would be fine. Um, but just to show you, that's not the only way. You could, in this case, maybe just add that fraction to the right-hand side first. And then let's clear that denominator. So let's go ahead and just multiply both sides here by the x squared. And so we now have our 8x squared equals our 12,800. And then dividing both sides by 8, that's going to give us our x squared equals 6. 1600 and then of course finishing out by taking our plus or minus square root is going to give us x equals negative 40 and positive 40. Now again you did want to think about for critical points where c prime does not exist and you do have a denominator that could go to zero, where that x squared there would go to zero, would be at x equals zero. But there's a couple of these values that we can throw out. So we can't have a zero length. So no zero length on a dimension of a side of a fence. And similarly, it wouldn't make any sense to have a negative length so we can throw out the negative 40. So this will happen a lot with an application problem. There'll be solutions that just won't make any practical sense for the application problem. So we're left with what is most likely going to be um, the 40 feet, the appropriate x length. But so far, all we know is this is a point of horizontal tangency. We don't know if this is a min or a max or potentially neither. So we need to verify. So let's verify that x equals 40 gives, and in this case we are trying to uh, minimize. And this time I am going to do this with the second derivative test. So I am going to use the second derivative test here. So last time we did the test for absolute extreme on the closed interval. This time I'm going to do second derivative test. You could do first derivative test, but let's go ahead and use second derivative test here. So I like second derivative tests, especially in situations where the second derivative is kind of quick to find which it really is here if you go and you're working with this form up here of the first derivative. So it's just power rule. So bring down the negative two and you would have positive 25,600, 25, excuse me, uh, x to the negative third. And so that's our second derivative. And then second derivative test says that you sub in your critical point into that second derivative, and you don't really care about the value, you just care about the sign. And in this case, I definitely would have a positive. And so when you're in the second derivative in an interval that is positive, that tells you you're concave up. So your interval is concave up at a point at x equals 40, that was where the slope of the tangent line was equal to zero. Okay, so you definitely have, because you had positive in the second derivative, you definitely have a min here. All right, so we have the min that we wanted. Now let's just go back and answer the questions. Um, what did they want? The dimensions that minimize the cost. Okay, so we definitely know that x is equal to the 40 feet. 
and then to find the y, the equation you want to go back to is that constraint equation. So if you go back up to the y in green up here, 2560 over x, so that's what you want to go back into. So the y was equal to 2560 over, and now you can sub in your 40 for the x. And so this is going to be your y is equal to, um, hang on a second, 64, sorry, um, double checking. So yeah, y is equal to 64 feet. So your x length on that fence was 40 feet. So I think that's the one that I had drawn in the red. So this is our 40 feet up above there. And then the y, the one that was I had drawn in blue, that is the 64 feet. So those would be the two dimensions that would minimize your cost. All right, when we come back next time, we will look at another example.